Hi guys, Allie here. I hope you guys are doing good. Today we have a really interesting uh, conjunction that's happening and I wanted to talk about it. Okay, this right here, this 26 degrees of, um, of Taurus, here we have Mars in the red and Uranus in the purple. And this is a really interesting little conjunction we've got going on. Now, Uranus is on uh, an 84 year cycle, okay? And so that's a little bit of a long cycle. That means it's gonna take it 84 years to come back to this place. And when it does, what do you think the chances are that Mars is gonna be there? I'm gonna guess super duper slim. I I don't know, I frankly have not done the math on it, but my guess is just that it's probably not going to happen again anytime soon in the Uranus cycle. So what is so special about 26 degrees? Um, because Mars is on like a two and a half year cycle. So Mars is going to hit up with Uranus about every two and a half years. I mean, like they're going around at different speeds, but Mars is going a lot faster. So you have a Mars and Uranus conjunction from time to time. But right here is really special because it is at the same spot in the sky as another star called Algol, okay? Algol is the demon star. This star is named after Medusa. So, so uh, I mean, let's put that a different way. The name Algol is actually Arabic, but it is the Arabic name of the star in the constellation of Perseus, where he's actually holding the head of Medusa, okay? So there is a little bit of interesting stuff going on here with that. Uh, first off, apparently a lot of people had been looking at this and wondering because remember that this, this is Donald Trump's birth chart and look at that MC right there. Uh, that is the midheaven for, uh, for Donald Trump and the midheaven is what you're known for, um, you, by your reputation, you know, what, what do people know you for? And People know Trump for a whole lot of things. I hope I think that we can agree, and a lot of people have very strong opinions about him, uh, both for good and for ill. And it's all right next to that demon star. And let me just look it up really fast. Uh, let's see, demon star, demon star. It's called the demon star uh, because it is known as a troublemaking star. Uh, the original name was Al Ghul meaning demon. Like that's where we get the word ghoul from is the Arabic ghoul. And it means like a demon or an evil spirit. And this is also the same root, um, root word that we get the word alcohol from. And so this is, this is a bunch of uh, just really interesting connections. Anyway, because, because the star is the head of Medusa and it's linked to Medusa, some people uh, we're wondering if there might be a decapitation kind of event that would happen around the couple of days surrounding this conjunction that's happening today. And what did we have? We had an attempted um, decapitation of sorts that took place two days ago, um, featuring a guy whose midheaven is right there, right next to this big conjunction. Okay. So one thing that I've been thinking about is Medusa and this concept of like cutting the head off the beast. Hi, honey. Do you have a problem? You may have a popsicle. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but this idea of like cutting the head off the beast, um, what does that mean? What does that look like for everybody? Um, because everybody has a bit of a different concept of what the beast is and why it might need its head cut off, right? Um, now this placement is also in Taurus and Taurus deals particularly with finances and money, investments and land and, um, you know, the things of the world that are finite and fixed. So I have been reading that this is a really great time to especially focus on making sure that your investments are good. Um, this is a very interesting uh, alignment for economic concerns. Now, when it comes to the stars, my own personal feeling is that 
you don't necessarily look for something happening on that exact day. Although we do see things happening on that day. Like, um, was it just last year or maybe two years ago when we had this big planetary alignment on the day that Roe v. Wade was overturned? You know, occasionally we do have obvious events that happen on the same days as, um, you know, these different alignments. And sometimes it's not so obvious because remember, what are the chances that we personally would be able to see um, events unfolding on the national stage or on the global stage and understand them for what they were? I think the chances are pretty slim because there's just so much that goes on in the world. And even though we live in the most information saturated time that has ever been, we still are very limited in what we can possibly know. You know, there's so much that goes on behind closed doors. There are so many decisions being made that um, are not always obvious that they're being made. And I don't know. I, I just think that, I don't know. Now, of course, the interesting thing that's happening today is that Donald Trump did just accept the nomination as, you know, the the nomination for president from the GOP, which was not a big surprise, I don't think, but it did happen and he named a VP. So this is an interesting thing that's happening on the same time as this, um, as this conjunction. Now, looking up information about Algol, one thing that I found about it is that it deals with extremes in a very big way. It just seems to love them. <laughs> um, for whatever reason, Algol is just really, really um, associated with extremity, okay? And so what does that mean? It means that the natives um, may be very humble or very bigoted. They may be um, very into, I mean, gall. anything that they care about, they just care really a lot about it. And if they are good, they're probably very, very good. And if they're bad, then they're probably very, very bad. And so I think that this is a very interesting thing to have so prominent, um, I mean, right now as part of the transit, but also in general um, relating to Donald Trump's birth chart, where he is very famously quite controversial and divisive and people just have very strong feelings about him for good or for ill, um, no matter what no matter if they like him or they don't like him, they really feel very strongly about him either way, most people. I don't know many people who who really are very apathetic about him, I'll say. I feel like everybody loves to have an opinion about Donald Trump, and they probably have. I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit young to have paid a great deal of attention to uh, Trump over the years, but he's been in the public eye for a very, very long time. And because of that... I mean, I think he's been, you know, a little bit of a, at least an interesting figure. And people have had opinions about him for his whole life, you know. Um, he has just always attracted attention. And it's just a very interesting, it's just very interesting to me. You know, here we have this native who was born during a lunar eclipse and then has their midheaven um, so close to this star that governs extremity. Uh, let me get these in that one real fast. We're making um, grilled or roasted cabbage steaks today. Here we go, done. Perfect. And um, anyway, we can just see how the stars have aligned to make him such a controversial figure. It's kind of like he almost couldn't escape it. It's like, this is his destiny. His destiny is to be pretty divisive. And I don't know. Now, this is very interesting. I ran this chart for right this second um, as I'm like cooking dinner, you know, and right here is Donald Trump's natal Saturn and it's exact the sun today. So um, in my earlier video from the 13th, right after we had that big event at the Trump rally, uh, I had mentioned that the transits and his chart and um, the chart of America all had huge uh, things crisscrossing between all the Saturns of all of those charts and the suns and moons of all of those charts. Because remember, anything that aspects Donald Trump's sun is also going to aspect his moon because he was born on a lunar eclipse. So um, just a whole lot of 
big Saturn energy going off right now for him. And because of that, kind of the entire world. So one thing that I wanted to talk about that I've been thinking about a lot um, just yesterday at church of all places, I try to like never talk about politics at church, but, um, but one of my friends came up to me, I've been out of town for weeks and she's like, Ellie, I have to know all of your thoughts about politics. And I'm like, oh boy. Um, so I tried to like keep it very minimal and church appropriate, you know, um, nobody wants to go to church and overhear people talking about politics. Right. But, um, <laughs> she said, how is it possible that there are like billions of humans in the world? And these are the two big choices that we have, right? Biden and Trump. She's like, how is that possible? Um, but here's the thing that I've been really thinking about quite a lot. It's that even though there are billions of people in the world, there are very few people in the world. Hey, buddy, do you need something? Um, do you know where dad is? Uh, yeah, he's asleep. He's taking a nap. Okay, bye. Um, <laughs> anyway, there are very few people in this world who have dedicated their lives to becoming a person who is qualified to be the president of the United States, you know, because it's really something that you have to kind of have had things lined up for you for a while in advance. You know, you can't just wake up one day and successfully run for president. You really have to have made yourself the kind of person that can do that. And you have to have a bunch of circumstances really line up for you, whether it's through corruption or through your own, you know, whatever, like not to say that Trump isn't necessarily corrupt or something, but like he had a lot of his own money that he could throw at it. Whereas other candidates um, over time have sometimes engaged in perhaps unclean practices of gaining money to run you know we have we have tricky situations um regarding all of the circumstances that allow a person to rise to prominence but the thing is that those circumstances have to be there oh hold on gotta get an orange popsicle i talked her into some frozen blueberries which are a much healthier snack although we only get the fruit based you know popsicles anyway the point is that most people have not uh, made themselves the kind of person that can handle the presidency. And most people also don't have all of the stars aligned. Basically, like that's basically what it takes. Whether, I mean, you if you think about it, whether we get this money that it takes to run for president successfully, if we do it through legitimate means or we do it through corruption means, it takes a phenomenal amount of things aligning and working out just perfectly to get you to the top. It just does. Now, once upon a time, in the olden days, I used to work as like a reporter. And once upon a time, I got to go to an event that was uh, where where President Obama was speaking. He was speaking about uh, the passage of Obamacare. That was it. And that my my experience with that event is totally worth hearing about on a different time. But I'll spare you for right this exact minute. But the point is that when I went there, I had the craziest experience. So Obama was an hour and 20 minutes late or 40 minutes late, something like that. And we were um, really irritated, as you can imagine. It was a true misery uh, to just stand there and wait for him. But here's the deal. I was facing away from the stage and talking with somebody there. And there was this moment where I could just feel the energy of the room change. It just shifted. I mean, it was unbelievable. It was just um, this shocking moment. And I knew Obama had entered the room and I turned around and there he was. Um, and previous to that, I had been interviewing people on why they had shown up to this event. And um, this one woman said, oh, well, have you ever heard him speak in person before? And I said, no, I never have. And she said, well, it's something you can feel in your bones. You, She said, you will not believe it until you experience it, but you wait and see he's going to walk in the room and you will feel it in your bones. And I did. I did before I even saw him. He entered the room and I knew it before he walked in. And I think that this is what people were talking about when they really talked about his, you know, charisma and stuff. I mean, it's been a while since Obama was running for president, but I think you can probably remember how everybody was talking about like 
how charming he was and how charismatic he was. What he really had was this massive and it was, it was a huge energy field and it was a massively powerful energy field as well. And this is really what you need if you're going to charm, uh, you know, 80 million people into voting for you. You can't just be a normal person and do that. And I think we see that. I think we kind of saw that with the Republican debates this time. Like that's the thing that's the freshest on my own mind. Um, and I don't know, I watched it. And, you know, some people are more charismatic than others, right? And some people have a bigger energy field than others. Um, I think that's one of the things about Donald Trump um, is that his energy field is just so massive. You know, it's just huge. And you don't get a huge energy field like that overnight. You really don't. It's something that comes, I mean, you really have to cultivate it. I think that some people are born with, with a larger energy field than other people. You know, like I... I just do. I mean, we see it. If you have kids, if you have multiple kids, you know, people come here with their different personalities. You know, I have one kid who um, his birthday was just this weekend and he did not want to party. He didn't even want a family party. He allowed his grandparents to come and asked, please no aunts, uncles or cousins. And um, so we did it, you know, but on the other hand, my other daughter's birthday is coming up and she was complaining that her birthday is at the very beginning of the school year. And so they had a normal birthday party, but a couple birthdays later into the school year by September and October, uh, they had started doing a thing where the whole class would give a standing ovation to the birthday boy or birthday girl. And she said, ah, I'm just so sad because I never got my standing ovation. I thought, okay, see, here it is. Here it is. We have one person that wants to go hide under a rock and doesn't want anyone to tell him happy birthday. We have one kid who's crying because she didn't get a standing ovation on her birthday. Like this is a real thing. Okay. It just is real. Um, we, there, there are so many differences in, in human beings and what we are bringing to the table and what our energy fields are like when we're born and then what we cultivate them to be. I myself was more on the shy end. And to this day, I still feel a little bit awkward if people tell me a happy birthday on my actual birthday, you know, I'm mostly over it, but it has taken years of concerted effort to become the fabulous fake introvert that, well, fake extrovert that I am today. I play an extrovert on the internet really well. <laughs> and then people are shocked when I go to parties and sit quietly in the corner, you know, but it, you can cultivate a larger energy field through work and intention, but it does take that. You know, I, I don't know that anybody um, just wakes up one day able to handle the hatred of 80 million people. You know, when you look at Trump and Biden, um, both of these men are dealing with a phenomenal amount of energetic attacks levied at their bodies and spirits all day long from all the people that say, oh, I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. Um, all the people saying he's Hitler, he's Hitler, he's Hitler. Like these are these are serious energetic weapons that are being sent from people's individual hearts to these men. Okay. And every time that somebody thinks those kinds of thoughts, those things lodge into their energy fields and it can cause um physical and emotional stress, you know, and it can cause physical symptoms. I don't know if you've ever had this happen to you. I mean, years ago I got embroiled in some horrible controversy and oh god I just was a mess for like weeks I like could not get myself together um if you've ever been publicly attacked on the internet you know that it's a massive stress on your physical body and your emotions as well um and none of us watching this you know me or you guys I would bet none of us have ever had to deal with something as um as intense as the any president or any presidential nominee or anyone running for president has ever dealt with you know when you go into such a big national eye people are judging you every single minute and their judgments are all affecting your energy field unless you have incredible boundaries and that's what i'm saying you have to have a huge energy field with absolutely massive boundaries if you're going to get through that kind of thing without developing some kind of like fibromyalgia or chronic illness or some kind of nonsense like that i said nonsense but i didn't mean it those are serious conditions like you're going to end up damaged when you experience so much 
public hatred. And I think we can see that really clearly in things like the Disney stars, you know, the young starlets that grow up and become like such messes and their lives fall apart and they like can't get it together. I don't think it's their fault. I think they're dealing with the effects of massive amounts of attention. Humans are not meant to have that much attention. We're just not. And it takes so much emotional and spiritual maturity just to survive it, like just to withstand it, you know? So anyway, back to my friend at church, when she said, you know, there's billions of people in this world, how come those are the two that we got? I kind of think that maybe that's the wrong question. I think perhaps the right question or the right observation needs to be, where are all of the, out of all these billions of people, where are the people that are doing their best to be the best we can be? And replace these guys, you know, like where, who, who here is like doing their best every day to be qualified, you know, to, to play at that level, you know, what are we doing? And no, not all of us have to do that, right? In the end, you only need one, right? You only need one president, right? But I don't know, that's just a thing that I've been thinking about. I told my husband when I was, um, like 14 years old, I decided that my life dream was to work in politics, which um, I don't know, that's like pretty seriously on hold for now. But um, I don't know, that's when I read How to Win Friends and Influence People. And when I decided that it's kind of selfish to be an introvert and you have to like get it together and talk to people and be the first one to introduce yourself. And you need to be the one that smiles to other people and people you don't know. And you have to be the one to take responsibility for making sure that um, people have a good time wherever they are. And like, you have to take responsibility for that. And I said, okay, I guess I'm taking responsibility for that. I'm like, somebody needs to do it and I guess I will do it. Um, but what would it look like if everybody woke up one day and said, you know what, somebody has got to take responsibility for the, this outcome here and I'm going to start taking more responsibility for it. Anyway, okay, well, those are a bunch of random thoughts for you. Okay, back to Algol and the conjunction today. Um, when it comes to uh, you personally, once again, let's keep an eye on our investments and our financial transactions. It might be a good day to take a look at um, our spending and how much we are living within our means or not. Um, there's just a lot of stars aligning for big thoughts around the economy on a big scale and our personal economy, you know, our personal finances and spending and saving. So a great day to be dealing with that. Um, again, I want to invite us all to stay grounded and focus on what really matters. And I mean, I think it is important to remember that what's going on in the world at large is something that import that is important and really matters. And it, I think it is important to be aware of it and engaged with it and to take action for the things that you care about. And it's also important to, you know, read the bedtime stories and cook dinner and, you know, live your life in the real world as well. So let's have a good balance of both. Let's live in the real world. Let's uh, be involved as much as it makes sense for us to be involved with the things that we care about. Okay. Bye guys. Have a good night.